Hi, welcome to the webinar on Metaverse in Education. What, why and how? This is a course that is available on UNESCO, ITT UNESCO uh, e-library. And the link is at the bottom in the description section. Now the purpose of this course is to give you an overview uh, or an introduction to, to, the, to the metaverse in education, how we expect the metaverse to be used in education. Now, the word metaverse means beyond the universe. And it was popularized in a, in a science fiction novel way back in 1992 called Snow Crash by Neil Stephenson. Now, the metaverse is a very exciting concept. It, it opens up a new landscape for education. And it has been predicted that it will be the next phase in the evolution of the internet, where people will work, collaborate, do business, entertain them, themselves, and more importantly, which we are most concerned about, to learn, using the metaverse to learn. Now, this course is a 36-hour course, and it's targeted at anyone who's interested in introducing the metaverse in their classroom for all levels of education, whether it be preschool, right up to university. There are four modules in this course. The first is what is the metaverse, technologies in the metaverse, teaching and learning in the metaverse, and finally, the fourth module, safety and ethics in the metaverse. We'll discuss each of these modules as we go along. Now, the first module, what is the metaverse? There's been lots of confusion about what is the metaverse and many people have interpreted the metaverse differently. Some suggest it is just merely cyberspace or the internet. And the difference being the way we interact using extended reality. And essentially, when we talk about extended reality, we're focusing on augmented reality and virtual reality. We'll discuss this as we go along. There are critics say that the metaverse has been overhyped and its promise and significance exaggerated. However, the proponents of the metaverse say that it's inevitable given the recent pandemic uh, large, uh, lots, of, and many, many countries and school systems moved to the virtual environment. Now, some argue that it's an iteration of Web 3.0, where people gather to communicate and collaborate. And this is one definition of what is the metaverse. It is an interconnected web of virtual worlds enabling users represented by avatars to connect and interact with each other in an immersive environment. It's, it's, it should be noted that the metaverse is not a single place in cyberspace, cyberspace or rather it consists of several virtual worlds, space or virtual environment. Now, people ask the question, is the metaverse already here? Some argue, yes, it's already here, and this is manifested in the gaming platforms that have been around for some of them over a decade. For example, Roblox, Second Life, Decentraland, The Sandbox. These are examples of gaming platforms, and they do give a hint of what, what is the metaverse, give a hint, an insight into what is the metaverse. Now, Let's look at module two. Now, in module two, we discuss the technologies for the metaverse. Now, in the technologies of the metaverse, this word has come about, it's called extended reality, which is a catch-all phrase for essentially two types of technologies. That's augmented reality. We, we, the short form is called AR. We have virtual reality, which is a, a in a shortened form, is called VR. And the, 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 the extended reality is a catch-all phrase encompassing these two. There is a third one, it's called mixed reality, 
we sometimes describe a combination of AR and VR. Now, let's look at augmented reality. Now, uh, some of you, some people know what it is. And it, just, it is not something new. It has been around for a long time. It is the blending of the digital world and the physical world. The digital world is uh, enabled by the computer. Now, it augments or enriches what, what one sees. You're superimposing digital content such as images, text, and animation to the physical world captured by a camera or a tablet. Now, this is an example. The picture shows an example of augmented reality, whereby uh, you have a 3D representation of images superimposed on the physical landscape. And it's often used with through a handphone and through a tablet can be used tablet. So now it, as mentioned earlier that it has been around for a long time and that there was in the sixties and seventies the stereoscope was an example of a of a tool used to give you the three D effect, especially in mapping and aerial photography. Then I think many people know about the Viewmaster where slides were put in and you get a 3D image of scenery, you get gone on a vacation and so on and so forth. And I think the most popular use of AR is Pokemon Go. In 2016, it was released and it created a great deal of interest. People were following the, 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 the char characters all over town. That is the example of uh, uh, augmented reality. Now, Augmented reality is now how later we'll talk about it. How do you bring it to the classroom? And here there are two uh, websites or platforms which offer augmented reality assets. They, uh, if you go to Free 3D, you can uh, uh, you can uh, uh, look for several good uh, uh, augmented AR assets, and sim similarly with Aon XR which also provides lesson plans on how to use these AR assets. Now, the, the other technology is VR, virtual reality. Now, it's a technology that creates a three, 360 degree simulated setting. And the user is immersed or placed inside an immersive experience. Now the example, the, pic the picture shows the example of virtual reality. And for virtual reality, there is need for using headsets. And some of the earliest headsets was the Google uh, Google headsets, is sometimes called the cardboard. Then there are other more sophisticated headsets uh, uh, being, being produced by various companies. And uh, there are two types of headsets. One is tethered. That's it, meaning that there is your, your, the headset is connected to a computer. The advantage of this is that it is much more powerful and it, the reaction time of the images is much faster. Whereas the standalone, you can have a standalone uh, headset which is not connected to the computer, but it tends to be a bit slower. Now the technologies, uh, that is for the technologies for the, for the metaverse. Now the third module, is the issue of teaching and learning in the metaverse. Now, many educators will ask a very, a very uh, uh, pointed question is, what benefit do I get if I were to bring this to the classroom? How, and, and as an educator, we are very, very concerned about only one word, and that is learning. Will AR and VR enhance learning in my, among my students? That is why in module three, we have tried to put the AR and VR in the context of a theoretical framework based on what we know about human learning. At the, at the core of the model, are the learning outcomes. And we have 
looked at Bloom's taxonomy. It's a very old taxonomy, way back, introduced way back to 1956, and very much relevant today. And now, how does it come into the digital setting? Now, as teachers, we are concerned whether by using these tools, these technologies, can we get students to evaluate? Can we get students to analyze? Do we, is, is the application of concept enhanced by using AR and VR? Or even simply, does understanding enhance using AR and VR? So at the core of it is the question, does it help learning? Now, if here we look back at Bloom's taxonomy again, the, does it help recall of facts? Does it help understanding? Does it help applying, analyzing, and so on and so forth? Going back to the model, if you look at the second layer of the model is interaction. There are three types of interaction. And this is shown in this slide. What is the student direction? Now, can AR and VR enhance interaction? Just take the other extreme will be a student seeing a printed textbook, learning from a printed textbook, in contrast to a printed textbook that has used augmented reality. Will learning be enhanced so that student contact student content interaction. So how does the student interact with all the assets? For example, the human body. Now you see the human body floating in the air. Now is that going to enhance understanding as compared learning about the human body from printed page? Then there's the other type of interaction, the student-teacher interaction. Will AR and VR enhance student-teacher interaction. So through using AR and VR. And uh, finally, student-student interaction. So whether the students interact, collaborate through AR and VR. So this is the, the model. And, and going back to the model again, and around the model are three prominent learning theories which explain human learning. So how we as human learn, that is the behaviorist theory, the cognitivist theory, and the constructivist theory. So we have, what we're trying to do in model three is to ground virtual reality and augmented reality in a model that will ensure students learn. Now, what are the benefits of virtual reality and augmented reality. Perhaps the most important benefit is the visualization aspect. You, you, you're looking at, at the world differently. You're looking in the world as three-dimensional world. You're looking at immersive. You're inside the human body. Okay? And it is, if, if the pedagogical strategies are well organized, it encourages active learning, whereby students interact with each other in the virtual environment. They interact using augmented reality, and it's expected there'll be higher engagement of students in learning. So if higher engagement is, is a likelihood of enhancing learning. And there's another aspect of using AR and VR in teaching and learning is to encourage collaboration. Rather than be a passive learner, students collaborate in a gamified AR and VR. And then this immersive experience, that's the most exciting part, especially of VR, which is very, very engaging. It's fun for learners. Then there's even studies show that situations in which VR is used can even elicit emotional reaction to the setting, which, which, which normally we couldn't do. And then there is also the question of learning students with learning difficulties 
there is some uh, research showing that it helps learners with learning difficulties. It is this being put, the, the biggest advantage is you can take learners to a world which you would normally not be able to do in a regular classroom. You could take them to visit the, the glaciers of, uh, of, of Greenland. You could take them to visit a, a factory or a, or a manufacturing center producing cars. They can see it better. So taking students to the real world is something very unique, the combination of AR and VR, which has so many benefits, which has benefits for education. However, we must be cognizant of certain challenges we as educators will encounter when bringing AR and VR in the classroom. Obviously, the connectivity issue, the lack of connectivity is an issue because many of these AR and VR assets are web-based, they are on the web. And the other one is having the right devices and uh, get, including devices, meaning the tablet, or the handphone or the laptop and also the various uh, headsets that are required especially for VR. Usually the AR, augmented reality, a handphone or a tablet would be sufficient but uh, there are also AR glasses, special uh, viewing glasses for AR. So that is what not and at the moment quite a few of these devices are uh, quite expensive. Now, uh, not so affordable. There's a lack of sufficient and appropriate assets. It has been growing. There are lots of AR, VR assets, and later we'll show some of the websites that offer these uh, assets either free or for a small fee. And then there is inadequate training of educators, even students, Sometimes we wrongly assume just because the students are digital natives, they are very savvy with all the digital tools, they will naturally be, be, be savvy with uh, learning with digital technologies. It is not really uh, that, that accurate an assumption. So even students have got to be trained to how to use these digital tools. And obviously teachers need, uh, that's why, one of the purposes of this course is to help teachers uh, get uh, to understand and hopefully to, to train themselves to, for introducing AR and VR in the classroom. And there is also a group of some groups of people who are not convinced on the effectiveness of, the, of AR and VR. And uh, there is a, a, quite a lot of research that has come about showing the effectiveness of this too. And then obviously the, the difficulty of sourcing for assets. Uh, one needs to be very, very diligent and spend a lot of time looking for these assets that are available on the web. Now, the, the following, what you see on the screen is some samples of uh, virtual reality and augmented reality assets. For example, they're all available on the web and a sample of augmented reality resources like Math Alive, SkyMap, Frogipedia, Human Anatomy, Twinkie, and so on and so forth. Alon Plants is for essentially for biology, Frogipedia for dissection, the human anatomy, and so on. Then the sample of uh, virtual reality resources. You have uh, Molecule VR, very interesting. Uh, virtual reality resource, Titans of Space, about, about, uh, about space and other planets, Class VR, Eduverse, and Meta, MetaQuest. These are samples of, of, uh, of, the, of uh, virtual reality resources. Now let's come to the fourth module. The fourth module is this issue of safety and ethics in the, in the Metaverse. And the, the safety concerns will grow in the metaverse because it is unique. It's unlike the internet, the immersive aspect of it, the realism with which 
students are presented. The question asks, will there be issues of safety because of this thing? Now, the, the, the question asks that whether the safety issues we currently encounter in the, in, on the internet, will it be exacerbated in the metaverse? Now, that's a question we have to wait and see when, when, when the realism it comes in. Will it lead to, for example, addiction, the realistic experience? And then to a point where young learners may, may not be able to differentiate between the real world and the virtual world. Now, that is something of concern to us educators when, when, when the when the metaverse matures, so to speak. Then there are the, the other issue, obviously privacy issues, which is also present in the present internet. Now in the in the metaverse, uh, sharing of personal information. And we have an additional here, the wearables that students will be using. Now, they will, they, they, there's, there's, the wearables could collect personal data of students. Now, there's the, obviously the other issue where you're talking of young people and students, the issue of cyberbullying. Now, is cyberbullying going to be, be increased in the metaverse, whereby people get humiliated, harassed, intimidated, okay? Abusive messages, embarrassing photographs, and so on and so forth. Nasty gossip. So this is an issue we, as educators, we should be aware of that it could increase in a form, it could be increased in a different form. And the other issue is sexual harassment. Now, uh, this is something very interesting in that because of haptic technologies, whereby there's in the introduction of touch through gloves and special equipment, people uh, could touch another person in the metaverse. And there are reports of uh, uh, people violating one's personal space by touching. So this is an issue that might increase in the metaverse and become more infrequent and is expected to, to be more intense sexual harassment. Now, the other issue is the issue of ethics. Now, the question is, there is... In theory, no one owns the internet. Then who determines the ethics in the internet? Is it the big tech companies? The government? If you look all over the world today, many governments have introduced laws and regulations on issues of ethics and behavior in cyberspace. And now in the metaverse, you might have to have additional regulations. And who is to police it? Who is to be responsible for, for misbehavior? Okay, so the current ethical issues in the internet, are they going to be similar or different? The ethical concerns in the metaverse. And this is the issue, the behavior. People are asking, the behavior that is not allowed in the real world. Now, if that behavior is misbehavior, a bad behavior is committed in the metaverse, are you liable or can you be charged? Can you be taken to court and so on and so forth? Crimes committed on the metaverse, who is to police it? So these are the issues we will be, uh, society will be facing as we go along. And then there's the other thing about uh, anonymity because lots of uh, people, they found studies have shown that people enter the universe concealing the identity to re remain anonymous. So that could be an issue in, in terms of uh, ethics. Now, that is the four modules. So if upon, at the end of each of the module, uh, there are several video clips to help you understand the content inside each of the modules. And at the end of each module, there is a quiz, which will, you can take them to see, to see how well you understand each module. And also included in each module is a booklet. It's a booklet describing in detail what I've just 
given an overview in detail of each of the modules, which you can download. It's in the form of a PDF. You can download and you can read offline. Now, at the end of the course, there is an examination. Uh, if you pass the examination, you will be awarded a certificate, just as the example here, a certificate by UNESCO, ITTE, and Asia E University combination uh, uh, of, of collaborative effort. That basically is the course. And we are hoping very much that after you have gone through the course, you will become trainers in, in your school or in any educational institution to, to spread the idea of this, the metaverse in education, and how you show examples of how it can be integrated into your teaching and learning from the whole stretch from preschool right up to university. And that is the end of my presentation and thank you very much.